Hi everyone, this is a video on metric conversions. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to convert between measurements based on whatever units you're given. So let's look here. Um, a measurement is defined as a value containing both a number and a unit. So you have to have both uh, or it's not a valid measurement. And we use uh, SI units, which came from originally the metric units, which you've probably heard of before. And this is what we tend to use in science just because it's easier um, for comparing between different forms of data. Examples here, like unit examples, are grams for mass, meters for length, joules for energy, seconds for time, and liters for volume, even though volume itself is not actually considered an SI unit. When going from a big unit to a small unit, you need to move the decimal to the right. If your number does not have a decimal, then it's at the end of the value, um, and then you just move it however many prefixes you move on your scale, which I'll show you in a second on the picture. And then you move your decimal left when you're going from a small unit to a bigger unit. So here we've got our, um, our prefixes. So let's say we're going from kilo to unit. So like kilogram to gram, we would move our decimal one, two, three places to the right. Okay. And then some other units here, let me X out of my video really quick. Some other units here that are not on your basic um, prefix scale are micro, which would be 10 to the negative sixth base units, nano, which is 10 to the negative ninth base units, and pico, which is 10 to the negative 12th base units. So those are just good to have as reference whenever we get into those kind of measurements. So now let's look at... Um, an example here. So we're going to go from grams to kilograms. I'm going to write out our prefixes over here, not our prefixes, but just the letters. King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. I'm a little sloppy, sorry. And we're going to go, um, and work on our converting from one to another. So if your unit gets bigger, your numerical value should look smaller. So when we're looking at our prefixes here, what we're looking at, we've got a decimal here at the end of the number. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this down here, 126, and we're going to put that decimal right there at the end because it doesn't have a decimal within the actual value. And we are going from grams, which is represented by that U here for unit, to kilograms. So we're going from a small unit to a bigger unit and we're moving one, two, three to the left because we're going from small to big. So we're going to take our decimal here and we're going to move it one, two, three to the left, which means in 126 grams we have 0.126 kilograms. So, when going from a small unit to a big unit, you move your decimal to the left. K is three units to the left from unit, so that's how many times you move your decimal, giving you, um, and this just shows where you started, I just did the work up here, giving you 1.126 kilograms. So now you can see this example down here at the bottom. I want you to pause the video and try this example. You can use your little um, mnemonic acronym thing that we've got up here as well. So now let's look at dimensional analysis. I don't know why some of my boxes are erasing when they show up, but it, it'll come back. So dimensional analysis is the actual math setup for converting between units when they're not the same or they're very, very far apart. So like if we wanted to go unit like gram to nanogram, they're very far apart. So we might need to set up some math here to, uh, to, to show these conversions as opposed to just moving the decimal. 
So your steps are to write your given unit and set up a T table, which I'll show you um, when we work out the next example. Write the unit you want to cancel on the bottom right and the desired unit on the top right. Whichever one is your bigger unit gets the number one. Okay, so this is what a dimensional analysis problem looks like. And when I say T table, that's what this little uh, chart looks like. So we were given 24 inches. We want to figure out how many feet that is. So we write our 24 inches and we set up our T table. The unit we want to get rid of goes on the bottom right. So we want to get rid of inches. We want to go to feet. So that goes up top. So then our inches cancel out. You do your math here. You're going to multiply these numbers on the top, and you're going to divide by whatever number is on the bottom. So you're going to do 24 times 1, which is 24, divided by 2, I'm sorry, by 12, which is 2, and that will give you 2 feet. So now we're going to go grams to nanograms together. Okay. So when we do this, we're going to set up our table. So we've got 14 grams Sorry, my lines are not going to be good. We want to get rid of grams, so they go on the bottom. We want to go to nanograms, so they go up top. Okay. And I'm actually going to switch this up just because of the units that I used here. I know I said the bigger unit gets one. No, I can still do that. That works. For every one gram, okay, that is 10 to the sixth nanograms. So that's a lot. That's like, that's a huge number. A million, I think. Um, so what you're going to do now that you've done this is you're going to cancel the units that will cancel. So your grams will cancel. You're going to multiply across and then divide, which we don't have to divide because it's by one. And you're going to actually, instead of multiplying this out, because when you plug this in the calculator, you should end up getting what's called a scientific notation number, which you will see in the next video. We'll go over how to write those. So we're going to get 14 times 10 to the 6th. And I'm going to rewrite this. Um, uh, and I'm going to put this as 1.4. Again, you'll see, you'll see this in the next video. So for your answer down here, you do not have to rewrite that. Oh, and I did this wrong. Look at me messing up. That should be 10 to the 9th. I just having to look. Micro was down there. 10 to the 9th. Um, 1.4. We gave this one extra decimal place. So this is actually going to be 10 to the 10th nanograms. Again, if you just left this as 14 times 10 to the ninth nanograms, you 100% would get credit for that right now. Um, so now I want you to try the conversion down here, which is microliters to liters. And if you, uh, you should have that written back in your notes from the first slide. So use that comparison there. And now you should be able to convert between units of metric conversions using either decimal.